Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop from my Patreon. It's an ARC Trooper helmet from Star Wars The Clone Wars. Quite a few months back, I started making some new helmets because the last season of Star Wars The Clone Wars came out, so I made my Captain Rex helmet. During that video, I mentioned how I was going to have a poll on my Patreon to decide what's the next helmet that I wanted to build. Well, I had three helmets that won. They tied. They all equally tied. One of them was the tech helmet, which I completed. And then some other things came up over the summer. Maybe you remember some of that. Maybe. If you don't, that's okay. So uh, it got postponed. Today I'm going to finish doing a second one of the helmets. And what I'm going to do is the ARC Trooper helmet, which is going to be an update of the Rex helmet, which is kind of cool. I was never happy with the chin anyway. So this is, it's a new prop, but it is also an update. The first update prop that I've done, right? Because the only real difference between the ARC Trooper and Rex that I can see is the, the crest has more of your swooped back, very classic sci-fi look. The uh, T-Visor is, of course, the new Phase 2 T-Visor. And then for, my, for me, I want to update the chin. So in order to build that, I'm going to use my Rex patterns and work from those. So this page I keep, this page I'm going to keep, this page I need to update the face plate, and then this page I'm going to update the chin. So I'm going to set these aside and I'll start cutting all these out. I cut out all the patterns that look the same. The pieces for the dome, the back of the head, the indents that are on the cheeks. Okay, that stuff can wait because I'm changing most of it. These guys I can start cutting out. I start tracing the patterns that I want to cut out from some six millimeter HD foam. It's nice knowing most of the pattern up front. There'll be much less figuring it out right now. That'll all happen when I make the chin later. I use my planishing stake to curve all the parts that'll make the dome or the top of the helmet. To do that, I use my heat gun to warm up the foam and then I force it over to the stake which curves the foam. It is so much easier when making a dome shape to glue together foam that's already curved. Front, front, front. All right. So I'm going to glue it all together with the pencil marks on the inside. That way there'll be less to clean up on the outside. I'll just have the seams. I won't have any divots or weird pencil marks that might be a problem. And what I need to pay attention to is that I'm putting the front edge with the front edge. Uh, the pieces are symmetrical, right? So it doesn't matter if I've got the pencil marks inside or out, but I need to make sure I've got front to front and C to C and B to B and so forth. Any curve is better than just forcing the flat foam. Also, I'm following my registration lines. These keep the parts aligned correctly, which gets me the shapes that I want. I add a strip of four millimeter thick foam around the inside of the helmet. This makes the indent that's on the brim. I also have the two panels that make the back of the helmet. These parts are identical to the Rex helmet. The back plates are glued together and they're ready to be glued on. Wait, didn't I do that? It's a good thing I've done this once before and I can double check my notes. Uh, I thought I had added a strip on the inside as well, and I did, but only on the front. I glue the back of the head to the helmet. To be sure that I put it in the right place, I mark the center of the back panel, which I lined up with the center seam on the dome. And I start assembling the detail panel that is the back of the head. And this is when I thought about something. Is the back of the Arc Trooper helmet different? So I'm gluing my parts together and getting ready to glue the back detail on when I realize this whole back panel is wrong for an ARC Trooper. I'm surprised I didn't look at this before and I'm glad I caught it now before I got more stuff glued on. But this particular back panel, this is totally wrong. Uh, I need to cut this off and remake it because the, the, the bulge for the ARC Trooper has parts that come up and it's smooth and there's a, a ring that goes around. There's a lot I'm actually missing. I'm surprised, but all right, so I'm going to cut this and fix it. I cut the back of the helmet off because I'm not going to need this part now. That's my fault for only ever looking at the front of the helmets when I was uh, double checking. If I had bothered to look at the back of the helmet, I'd realize the back is very different. Well, you know. <laughs> while I think about how I'm going to make the new pieces I need, I start to grind down the seams on the dome of the helmet. I want this to look smooth when it's painted. 
Then I smear some flexible spackle over the seams. This will fill in the cracks and smooth out the marks from the grinding. I like using this spackle. This stuff is made to flex a little, and when it dries, I can sand it smooth, which you really can't do with silicon or acrylic sealers. Instead of the back of the head, I start on the face this time. The front panel is pretty much the same on both helmets. I just need to extend the sides for the ARC Trooper. They wrap around to the back. I cut the face plate out, but I don't cut the visor hole out just yet. If this part stays as one piece, it's going to be easier to get the smooth curve that's on the face. I also hadn't drawn out the phase two visor yet. Yeah, there we go. Trace the visor shape onto the face. Still not going to cut it out just yet. And I also add in the spacers for the cheeks. The cheeks are cut on an angle, not 90 degrees. I had set my bands on 45 degrees and cut the edges. And then I'm using a grinding bit to smooth out what I couldn't reach with the bandsaw. Before I attach the face panel, I glue a strip of foam inside the brim of the dome. This helps keep the face level with the brim of the dome, and I mark the center of the face panel so I could line it up with the center seam on the dome. I cut out a new back panel. This is still the same basic pattern piece, but I didn't add the thick upper layer this time. I have the center marked again here because I want the seams to be under the ears on the side of the helmets. Which seams? The ones that are made by gluing in the cheek panels. And it's okay if the bottoms don't line up because the back is supposed to be longer. There's a thin strip that goes around the base of the dome. So I cut a long strip of two millimeter foam. And I start in the center of the back and glue it down all the way around the base of the dome. I had to add a five millimeter wide strip of 10 millimeter foam onto the back just for the strip to run over and keep the same height. So I'm gonna to need to add a ridge around the bottom of the back of the helmet. This is where the, the, the rounded bit, that's the neck tube goes. Um, what I did before on the Rex helmet was about 15 millimeters. So I got a 15 millimeter piece I got cut here. I just need to glue that on up to 97 millimeters from the top of the edge here, because that's all the Rex helmet was. Yep, 97. So. But I don't need that piece. I need to glue these guys on. So basically, I need to glue these guys on. Let's see. Just like the Rex helmet, I'm adding the strips in pieces with the seams to be hidden under the ears and the back of the head. Smaller strips are just easier to work with. And the last one, I can trim down once it's on. With minor modifications, I can add the ear panels I have from Rex. These sidewalls are 12 millimeters tall. On Rex, they were 15 millimeter. But I want them to be shorter so the ear panel will lay flat to the face panel. Um, so then the back, I use a scrap of foam cord to get a rough shape for the back panels. It doesn't have to go in very much. How do I want to do this? Do I want to do this with six? How tall is this? I think I need to do six. So this is. That is 10, yeah, so if I do six and it goes infinitely small on up. Okay, so if I make two panels out of six, that'll curve and fit, they can be equal to the bottom and then, and then tilt in towards the top. So I need to make a couple of uh, rib pieces. Let's get my sixes cut first and I cut my two parts from six millimeter foam. I want these to be flush with the bottom edge and all the way in at the top. To make the wedges to support it, I cut two 10 millimeter foam strips the length of the sides and then diagonally cut them in half. And I have four wedge strips to glue down this way. That keeps the panels right where I want them. I don't worry about the gap that's in the middle because there's yet another piece that's gonna fit over the gap, but I can't glue it down until after the neck ring pipe thing is installed. But first, I want to get the crest made. It took a few tries to get the dome shape copied from foam core, and the first crest looks good, but it's not quite correct. The third pattern is better. I like this shape more. It's taller and not completely flat. I use the pattern to cut two pieces from some six millimeter foam, and then using 10 millimeter thick foam, I cut a strip that's 25 millimeters wide. I glue this in as the middle, sandwiching it between the two six millimeter pieces. That's gonna make a nice thick crest on the top of the helmet. I glue the second panel down and cut a point so the filler piece will fit into the curve on the back. 
And note that the back, it's all flat. The indent isn't here on this part. And then I stuff a piece inside so I don't pinch this part of the crest when it's being glued down. And I grind the extra off the front and the back for a better fit. I think I needed a longer piece stuffed inside. I think I squeezed it while I was putting it on. That kind of is not cool, but I think I'm stuck with it. Uh, nope, I was actually able to fix it. Okay, I got a, I really like the Mohawk. The Mohawk is, or is it a Mohawk? Maybe it's just a swoop. So let's, 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 let's call it a swoop instead, even though that's a speeder bike, that's not what I'm talking about. The swoop up here, the Flash Gordon swoop, that's gotta be my favorite part of this whole thing. Yeah, that kind of, what, that's one of the things that sold me on making an Art Trooper helmet. Moving on. I have some insulation foam for pipes that I can use for the neck ring and the insulation comes split open, so I add glue to one edge. The cardboard tube will hold the foam open until the glue dries. I don't have a piece long enough to do the neck in one wrap. I started where I could hide the seam under the ear trim, and then I add a second piece to finish the neck. I'll trim these down once the chin is remade. The neck ring is only attached to the top edge. I just let the pipe foam roll itself under the back panel. Paint will glue it in place when everything is finished. The trim for the back panel is cut from four millimeter foam and the sides are all on an angle. It wraps over the neck ring, which is why I couldn't glue it on earlier. So while the details in the back of the head, well, let me get the right helmet. So the details for the back of the Rex helmet is actually different from the details in the back of the Art Trooper helmet. But what's nice is the circle that I have that I've got pre-made for the Rex helmet. I'm gonna be able to reuse this for the Art Trooper. All I gotta do is uh, ground down the back here so it fits this curve of the helmet. And then I need to taper the circle so it's more of a flat top cone. So, <laughs> time to use the Dremel. I grind down the back curve and grind the angle into the disc. I keep saying grind or grinding because these are grinding bits. A uh, sanding bit or the sanding drum is a different type of bit and it's much more aggressive to be used on foam. I mean, you can do it, but it eats the foam up much faster. Before I glue the disc on, I use a wood burner to add some panel lines onto the back of the head. I used a metal ruler to keep them straight. Glue the disc on and the panel lines run under the disc. I made a paper pattern for the ear panel details and I cut them from some two millimeter foam. That tiny strip is all I needed to cover the seam on the neck ring. And if you were wondering, yes, I was stressed that I would miss the seam and wouldn't hide it at all. More circles that are the same size as the one on the back of the head, but these are only six millimeters thick. Glue them on and I have two parts left to make. So yeah, I need to make the rangefinder and the chin, which is the part I like the least on my Rex helmet. Got a plan on how to do the chin. So because I wasn't happy with the face on the Rex helmet, right? I, I got it done, I needed to get it done. It's okay, it could be better. I wanted to try something different on the Art Trooper helmet. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I 3D printed the piece that I need and it's about the right size. I wasn't really able to scale that beforehand because I didn't have the helmet before I started printing it. But now I can actually make a aluminum foil and duct tape pattern off of this piece and make the parts that I need and hopefully get the right shape this time. I need to cover the print in aluminum foil first. That'll conform to the shape. And then I can add a layer of duct tape, just one layer. I need to cut this apart in a minute. And then I guess at where I think I need the seams and where they will be the least problem. And I also add some registration marks because I'm gonna need those. I cut the foil apart and then add darts until the pattern lays flat. When I trace it onto some cardstock, I add extra onto the back because the printed part was not quite as big as I needed, so I need to get creative on the backside. I use the pattern to draw two sets of chin parts, a left and a right, onto some four millimeter HD foam. The panel that fits under the mouth is six millimeter foam, and so are the parts that join the left and the right sides together. First, I glue all the parts shut, and I'm keeping all the pencil marks on the inside again. Then I can glue the panels together. I letter coated each seam, that way I can keep track of which seam goes where. With all the four millimeter pieces together, I glue them to the thicker under the chin panel. 
and then roll them around to fit the mouth panel. I think this might be a little too big, but I bet I can still get it to work. I cut the under chin and then I'll re-glue it a little smaller. <laughs> More panel lines. It still looks kind of flat. I cut a right angle piece with a rounded corner and then glue it to force the peak into the face. I cut a couple of teardrop shapes to fill in the front of the chin pipes. These will also help shape the chin correctly. I need a wider angle for the mouth. My pattern's a little too small. There's some major stress making these cuts because I don't want a bunch of seams in the face of my helmet. I check the fit of my chin assembly and I think about how I need to cut it to match the helmet. Well, actually it only has to go so far and then it just becomes the underside. I make my cuts and add more darts on the back. As I look at how they need to go together, I decide to make the mouth grill and then use that to glue both parts together. The grill is made from layers. The base is two millimeter foam and onto that I glue some teeth. These are 15 millimeter wide and spaced about that far apart. I glue the mouth to the chin assembly first and then glue everything to the helmet. I started to cut the visor open at this point because it was gonna let the mouth fit better. After the chin is attached and secure, I then glue the neck pipe to the chin. There's a set of respirator circles that goes on the chin, and there's that croissant-shaped piece that goes on the underside as well. This is just a series of half-round dowel pieces that are glued together. I use a sharp blade and carefully cut the visor out. All the sides are glued together now, so the shape of the helmet isn't gonna change. Clone Trooper helmets still have really good visibility. I've got a weird little, you know, these things create a weird little like blind spot, but I've got excellent perif uh, peripheral vision, whatever. You know, I can see on the sides of my eyes really well. Peripheral, there we are. <laughs> I grind down the seams of the chin. There shouldn't be any visible seams here. And I clean up the cut edges on the visor. Now for the rangefinder. I cut a hole in the right ear that a half inch pipe will just barely fit into. And I cut the pipe a little smaller and drill the quarter inch hole near the end. I can just fit a piece of 3 16 inch brass square tube into that hole. Yeah, I put a square peg in a round hole. I wrap the base in foam and then I can pierce the brass through the foam and into the hole. The rangefinder itself I will cut from some solid neely pad foam. I trace the sides and top onto the foam block and then cut everything away with a bandsaw. So then I cut the rangefinder out of my bandsaw. I actually put a camera in front of it and focused it to make sure everything was right. I just didn't press record. So, uh, but I, you know, you run it through the bandsaw and you save this edge and you use that flat so you can run through the, anyway, one solid piece of foam, cut the rangefinder, and then I'm gonna just glue it on here. I'm gonna add a little bit of detail on this one. I add strips of two millimeter foam and a small piece of half round dowel on the top. These parts will look really good dry brushed. All right, so I need to. What I need to do is glue the foam to the brass. So I mix up some five minute epoxy and glue the rangefinder to the tube. And then I fill in the end of the PVC pipe to secure the bottom of the tube. The PVC is not completely full, but the brass is submerged. While the epoxy sets, I sand the chin as smooth as I can get it and then paint the helmet with a couple of coats of gloss white acrylic house paint. One of my contemporaries, William Shakespeare, used this type of paint on his Xenomorph suit build. I wanted to try it here instead of spraying three or four coats of plastic dip And there are a few details that are painted black or gray, like the brim and the grill and the respirators on the chin. The rangefinder is just gray with some dry brushing. I added a little dry brushing and some minor weathering, just a touch. I want a cleaner looking helmet this time. But instead of making it a particular character, I decided to just paint this helmet in the style of the 332nd Company, which has an orange and white pattern that's inspired by Ahsoka Tano's facial markings. Most of the materials I used are available to order and have shipped right to you. I put a list and some links in the description. And so I've completed my Art Trooper helmet from the 332nd Squadron. I'm very happy with how this helmet turned out. I'm really excited. 
about the improvements I was able to make off of my original Rex pattern, especially the chin. And I'm sure if you've watched this far, you noticed that I actually 3D printed the part for the chin, but I didn't use the 3D print on the helmet. That's because I still like to make things by hand. I still enjoy crafting things myself. 3D printing is very cool, and I could see doing 3D printing parts. But for this helmet, I wanted it to be all foam, and I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could actually make a pattern off of a part this small and this complicated, and I think it worked. And that's kind of exciting, because that could open up a whole new way that I could make more parts for making more helmets, because I enjoy making helmets. I enjoy making Star Wars helmets. And I know that there's lots of different ways that I could make lots of different helmets. But this is how Odin makes. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make an intro. It's the Ark Trooper helmet from the animated Clone Wars television series. It's an Ark Trooper helmet. It's an Ark Trooper, Ark, 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 Ark. It's the Raiders of the Lost Ark Trooper helmets. It's an Ark Trooper helmet. What is it, Odin? It's an Ark Trooper helmet. <laughs> I want to thank Jali, Brian Martin, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.